Welcome back to the Gun Dungeon, guys. We got some Underwood ammunition here to test in jail today. This is the 6.5 Grendel 110 grain controlled chaos. This is claiming 2,800 feet per second, but I'm going to be shooting it through a 16 inch barrel, so we'll see what the velocities are with that. Good looking round. I believe this is a monolithic all copper bullet, but we'll know for sure when we put it in jail. Starline brass, as, you, as Underwood typically does. Good looking round. Can't say anything bad about that. <clears throat> We do have Jail Block Jerry back from his hiatus. So Jail Block Joe is hanging out waiting for the demise of Jail Block Jerry. I think Jerry went over to Gaza for a tour or something. I don't know, he won't really talk about it much. So it must've been pretty dramatic. As I said, we're gonna be shooting it from a 16 inch barrel here. So we'll see what the actual velocities are since I have a chronograph set up here. We'll shoot through that into the Jail Block have a freshly molded clear ballistics gel block in the front, old beat up junk block in the rear. So we'll see exactly what we're gonna get here. And I don't think there's really anything else to say. Let's just go ahead and set up, put one of these in the gel. Well, there we go. We got 2,608 feet per second from the controlled chaos. Now, I don't know how controlled it was, but it was definitely chaos. Look at that. There is jacket pedals everywhere. Pretty horrific wound track right there. But goes, that wound track is pretty rowdy all the way up to about 10 or 11 inches but extremely brutal in the first eight or so. And then that bullet travels all the way down and the base of that sucker is right there. Hopefully you can see it there. That's that base. These kind of act like that Liberty civil defense stuff where it sheds a bunch of jacket at first, a bunch of fragmentation, then a solid base just goes on. And the edge of that is going to about 24 and three quarter. So if I hold it directly above it right there, there you are. Pretty good penetration for that base. But once that, once all that jacket separation, or not jacket separation, not a jacket, it's monolithic. Once all that fragmentation happens, it's a pretty straight line wound track. Like you lose it all right here, right there where Jerry's legs are. Now this did send Jerry for a heck of a ride, guys. He went up in the air for a minute. Matter of fact, I had stood up from a knee before he ever hit the ground. <laughs> Let's try one more. Y'all be sure to go over and check out Vetter Holsters. They're a big sponsor of the channel, helped me out quite a bit. So y'all get over there and help them out as well. Here's one of their outside the waistband models. Awesome design. They have about any design you can think of. They're also one of the few companies that I've seen making holsters like this with the claw attachment inside the waistband model that fits the Glock 29 and the 10 millimeter versions of the XDMs. So if you have a gun, they probably make a holster for it. Check out Vetter Holsters. And while we're at it, I gotta mention Target Sports. They just became a sponsor of the channel. If you shoot very much throughout the year, their Ammo Plus membership is well worth it. It'll pay for itself in the year's time if you shoot very much at all. So be sure to go check out Target Sports. Their link is below. Twenty-five forty-one on this. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. I hope you can. Twenty-five forty-one, and I hit real close to the other one. Same elevation, but it's the one closest to you. The same thing. I mean, just catastrophic wound track right off the rip, and then settles down about 11, 10, 11, 12 inches in there. You can see above here the two side by side man that is that is rowdy and then check this out there sets our our bases essentially side by side so almost 25 inches of penetration from those two bases performance is very consistent looked like the velocities were really consistent too let's just take another look 
Look at all those pedals in there. This block is junk now. You know, I really hate to just put two shots into gel for a whole video, but I don't think there's much room left in this block to hold all the fragments and be able to see what's going on here. But the, the performance is consistent enough. I think that's what you're gonna get every single time. The bases were within a quarter of an inch of each other as far as penetration. Wound tracks looked exactly the same. Now, my thoughts about it, this is gonna be a radical defense type ammunition any type of home defense or, you know, life and liberty top gun defensive ammunition, anti-personnel, that's pretty rowdy. That is pretty daggone rowdy in my opinion. Now, would I use this for hunting or something like that? Probably not. One, I don't wanna dig that crap out of the meat in my deer if I were to shoot one with it. And two, I don't know that that type of penetration once you lose all of that weight, all of that fragmenting happens, yeah, it's gonna destroy some internal organs, but I don't know that that base would continue on if it were to hit bone or something like that and go much deeper and give much of an exit wound. Exit wounds for me are important for hunting, which I know this isn't a hunting type ammunition. At least it's not marketed as that anyways. You could use it if you had to in a pinch, but it wouldn't be my first choice for hunting. Now, home defense, if I was using a 6.5 Grendel to defend my home, I'm gonna stuff these in there because that is pretty freaking rowdy for a home defense type gun. So let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this round. Let me know how you would use it and what you thought about it below. If you liked today's video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and please check out my sponsors below. Those guys have really done a lot for a channel as small as mine. Keeps a little channel like mine afloat, so go give them some love too. Until next time guys, stay tuned.